Hello, welcome to the first geometry workshop. Today we'll see how mathematics is reflected in both the natural world and the man-made world. This workshop includes various activities that you can do to improve your knowledge and skills. Geometry emerged in the early days of civilization. The word geometry, like many of the words we encounter, has Greek roots. It has two parts, geo, earth, and metri, meaning measure. The earliest geometry was used for measuring land, but it has evolved to measure and describe shapes and space, both natural and man-made. Let's start with some images from the natural world. Look at these fantastic amethyst crystals. These clear violet crystals are formed from silicon oxide crystallising in molten volcanic magma. Amethystos is Greek for not intoxicated, the ancients believed that wearing these stones would protect you from drunkenness and keep a balanced mind. Shapes in chemistry range from simple cubes, as in sodium chloride, which is common day salt, to more exotic structures like carbon-60, which was only discovered in 1985, and more of which later. Here we see examples of the golden rectangle, which is closely related to the shapes we will discuss today. It appears in the human body, in nature and in art. See how the golden spiral matches the shape of the human ear, the petal structure of a rose and the features of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. The proportion of the golden rectangle is such that if you chop a square off one end, then the remaining rectangle has the same proportions as the original. But geometry goes beyond the natural world. Geometry is the basis for the visualisations in computer games, animation effects and virtual reality. Want a new avatar for your internet persona? Then get one from TurboSquid. Just add it to your cart for eight bucks. Let's head off now to Canada to see how mathematics and geometry have inspired the magnificent architecture of the Montreal biosphere. This is a museum dedicated to the preservation of the environment climate change and sustainable development. The form of the building is actually a 32V icosahedron geodesic dome. Sounds pretty complicated, eh? Well, hang on in there and you'll understand at least the principles by the end of the video. The architect was Richard Buckminster Fuller, also credited for inventing the geodesic dome. He studied at Harvard College in Boston, where he was expelled twice once for spending all his money partying, and once for irresponsibility and lack of interest. When you look closely at his picture on the cover of Time magazine, it's perhaps not surprising that he came to invent the geodesic dome. Incidentally, the carbon-60 compound that we saw earlier was named fullerene after him, and the molecule dubbed the buckyball. Moving closer to home, assuming that you live in the UK of course, we can see the splendid architecture of the domes at the Eden Project. Each of the domes housed plants from diverse climatic regions. These were designed by Sir Nicholas Grimshaw, not the radio DJ, but a fantastic architect who also designed, amongst other things, the International Railway Station at Waterloo. All great examples of geometry in architecture. Next, we're off to Greece, to the ancient capital, Athens. Here is the magnificent Parthenon, sited on the Acropolis. Its architecture is full of golden rectangles. The Parthenon was completed in 432 BC. A temple to Athena, Greek goddess of lots of stuff, including wisdom and mathematics. The chap in the foreground is Plato, who was born around the same time, a famous philosopher and thinker. He founded the Academy in Athens, which is considered to be the first university in Europe. This is the setting for our main focus today. We will look at the three-dimensional shapes that Plato studied. Before we do this, however, we need to look at some two-dimensional shapes. These are regular polygons. Poly means many, gon means angle. These are many-angled figures. Regular, as for in each shape, the sides are all equal and the angles are all equal. We have an equilateral triangle, 
square, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, and then octagon, nonagon, decagon, endecagon, and dodecagon. The penta, exa, epta, octa, nona, deca, endeca, dodeca are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 in Greek. We'll try to build some three-dimensional shapes with these. Plato wanted to build three-dimensional shapes that use the same regular two-dimensional shape for each of its faces. And to keep perfect symmetry, he wanted the same number of shapes at each vertex or corner. It's better to see a visual explanation of what he did. We're going to investigate what happens using equilateral triangles, as this is the most interesting case. Here we're using cardboard box technology to understand the problem. Here are equilateral triangles that I've cut out of a cardboard box. Across the top of the screen I've arranged three, four, five and six triangles ready to build a three-dimensional shape. To make a 3D shape, there needs to be a gap between the end triangles. The three triangles give us a triangular pyramid, the four give us a square pyramid and the five give us a pentagonal pyramid but the six triangles just don't get off the ground. Let's see how Plato progressed this to build his solids. Here are the three dimensional shapes that he built. First there is the tetrahedron with four faces, then the octahedron with eight faces, and then the icosahedron. Icosa is 20 in Greek and this has 20 faces. Only one solid can be built from the square and that's the cube or hexahedron and only one solid can be built from the pentagon and that is the dodecahedron with 12 faces. There are no more. You may like to consider why you cannot build a 3D shape from hexagons. Plato was so taken with the perfection of these solids they contain a very high degree of symmetry and can sit exactly inside a sphere with each vertex on the surface. He believed that these had to correspond to what in those days were considered to be the fundamental elements of the world. Earth, air, water, universe or ether and fire. These are the five platonic solids. Now we come to the central activity of this workshop, which is to make models of these solids. Here's one way to do it. Head off to www.senteacher.org and you'll find these 3D nets of each solids that we've talked about. They're just like the models on cereal packs. It's best if they're printed on some sort of card, however plain paper will work too. If you don't have a computer printer, or you just fancy going large like I did, then I'll show you what to do next. This is part of a box that my new tennis bag came in. To make a triangle with side 10 centimetres, you'll need three strips, 8.7 centimetres wide. On the top line, mark off an offset of 5 centimetres and then 10 centimetres thereafter. Next line down every 10 centimetres, the next one a 5 centimetre offset and 10 centimetres thereafter, and so on. Use a ruler to draw in the diagonals as shown. Again, one line allows you to average out many measurement errors. And of course, you can scale things down if you have a smaller piece of cardboard. Complete the diagonals both ways. We're nearly ready to cut. Score all the lines on the cardboard. This will make it easier to cut the cardboard and easier to fold it. It can be quite hard work cutting through this stuff. And this is what I got. I managed to get a complete net for an icosahedron, a net for an octahedron, and two connected triangles left over to which I sellotape two of the spare triangles to make a net of a tetrahedron. Next, make sure that you fold every edge in the nets before you try to sellotape the edges together. Now you're ready to assemble your shapes. Here are mine, pretty pleased with these. They feel solid and substantial. And I can also take the opportunity to remind you about what vertices are. Here is a vertex. I always remember the shape V in the corner, and V is for vertex. We call each fold an edge, and we call each of the triangles the faces. Having these models really does make it easier to visualise and understand these shapes, and making them is also rather therapeutic. So here is another activity to do. 
preferably after you've made the models as this will make it easier to complete correctly. Here is a VEF table in which you can record the number of vertices, edges and faces for each of the 3D shapes. There's a PDF available from the Geometry Workshop class on Google Classroom or you can just draw up the table yourself. In the last column, calculate V minus E plus F and see what you get. This is Euler's polyhedron formula. Can you guess what his formula is? I'm sure there'll be some football fans out there and I'd like to show you how this stuff has been used to create the design of a football. The modern day football is based on what's called a truncated icosahedron. So let's see how this solid got its name. We start with an icosahedron. Truncated means cut off. As we cut off the vertices, each vertex becomes a pentagon and each face becomes a hexagon. When the original edges are divided into three equal parts, we get regular pentagons and regular hexagons. And there we have our elegant truncated icosahedron. This shape was created by another Greek mathematician about a century after Plato. His name was Archimedes and he lived in Syracuse in Sicily. Archimedes is famous for having exclaimed Eureka when he discovered what makes a boat float whilst in his bathtub. As a great footballer he was also heard to shout over here Alessandro on me head in Greek of course. Now we come to the final demonstration of the workshop. We're going to look at how a geodesic dome is constructed. Let's see how a 4V dome is built based on an octahedron. Notice how the octahedron can sit inside a sphere, each vertex being the same distance from the centre. We will start with a single triangular face. As it's a 4V dome, we divide each side into four equal parts. We use these to divide the face into 16 equilateral triangles and mark the vertices. Then we draw rays from the centre of the sphere through each of these points. These are projected onto the surface of the sphere to give the red points. These will be the vertices of the geodesic dome. We join these points with struts. Here we see a quarter of the dome, we build the rest in the same way. Struts with the same colour have the same length. You will notice most of the triangles are not equilateral, just close to being equilateral. So now back to the biosphere. Here is part of the original patent application made by Buckminster Fuller. You can clearly see the top half of the icosahedron. Each face has been divided into equilateral triangles and the vertices have been projected onto the surface of the sphere. An incredible design which in addition to its aesthetic qualities is very strong and stable. Well that's it for today's workshop. All that remains is to look at the stuff you might do. You might make the models, take photos or videos. Complete the VEF table. That's the table counting the vertices, edges and faces of the various 3D solids we've looked at. If you want a challenge, you might try to do that for a truncated icosahedron or even a geodesic dome. Try the memory games. These files are available online. On one side, there are the names of the shapes, solids and people that we've discussed today. On the other, there are the images. Three ways to use them. You can print them single-sided, see if you compare the pictures and text. Print double-sided, picture side up, can you remember the name of the shape or person? And the final memory game, they're printed single-sided. You turn over a pair, if they match you get to keep them, otherwise the next player takes a turn. You can do some research, select one of the people or topics, find out more about them, make a poster or video, and post your results and efforts with a hashtag PLS Ask Eddie or Please Ask Eddie and tell your friends. You'll find the PDF files on the link on the YouTube video description or alternatively you can join Google Classroom with the code of QRZVGOV. All that remains is to say thank you very much for watching. See you next time I hope. Goodbye.